we saw those 12 days morning, 12 days of losses for the banks that's the longest losing streak that we've seen uh, for the banks since January 2009 top banks are back in uh, recovery mode what was your take on on how the sector was uh, sold off at the beginning of the week in my view I felt the sell-off was quite aggressive and not necessarily rational really because if you think of the development over the last week the nationalization of the banks have really improved reduced risk within the sector improved asset quality within the sector and so i think really we would have expected a more positive move from investors and not the huge sell-off we saw but i think that sell-off has created significant um, opportunities for investors to take in stocks at very depressed prices valuations have really declined significantly. Top banks like First Bank, GT Bank are trading at significantly low valuations. GT, First Bank currently is trading at book value and on a forward basis trading below book value at 0 0.9 times. So I think really it's created opportunity for investors. Dividend yield has increased significantly and for First Bank, dividend yield for, based on our estimates for 2011 is currently at 11 percent, which is in which uh, compares favorably with the uh, money market rate at this time. So I think really it's created significant opportunities, yeah. very high impressive opportunities for investors to take, take advantage of the low valuations. And I think that's what we saw yesterday because the banking sector, like you said, Oversold. supported the market. And we expect that to continue in the medium term as well because valuations are still significantly low. GT Bank is trading at 1.4 times. Let's talk about GT Bank. Last, um, two, last two years. Let's talk about GT Bank. Now, that stock rising uh, almost 3% yesterday, as you say, uh, trading at historic lows at the moment, but still to report its first half numbers. Uh, it's expected to report growth after that 5% year on year decline in first quarter numbers for the year. Uh, what type of growth in loans and deposits are you seeing and then overall profit lines uh, for the first half? Well, sorry, I, can't, I didn't get that question. Could you repeat it again? The, I think the, the GT Bank said to release their first half results soon. Uh, we saw that 5% decline a year on year in uh, gross earnings for the first quarter. What type of growth are you expecting? Do you expect a turnaround for the first half? Yes, yeah, sure, Samantha, we expect a turnaround in the first half of the year. And I think really the 6.5% growth in loans and advances in Q1 is expected to drive that. We expect interest income to come up stronger in the second half of the year. We expect fee income as well, which is tied to credit, uh, credit to also increase as well. And I think we expect that to translate down to the bottom line as well. We expect stronger growth in bottom line. Uh, and I think also in terms of loans and advances, we expect an improvement in Q2. However, I think there were still some loans that were sold to Amcon during the second half of the year. So we expect that to depress uh, loans and advances over that period. But I think we still expect that the bank would meet our loan growth forecast of 12%. And we expect net interest margins to also come up stronger. Forecast right now is at 7.2%. We expect that the bank would meet that or, if possible, go ahead of that. Because for the tier one banks, we've seen an improvement in net interest margins, and we expect that to translate in that stock as well. And we expect cost to income ratios to come in lower. We expect we're, our full year forecast for cost to income ratio is at 52%. And by as a Q1, cost to income ratio was at 48%. And so we expect that that should also come in low as well and I think for asset quality we expect loans uh, loans and other gross uh, and, and non-performing loans ratio to come up lower where our full year forecast is for five percent and we expect the so sale of loans to Amcon to drive that and I think we also expect that the bank would announce an interim dividend for mm. half year our forecast is for 30 Kobo dividend um, announcement and that's based on our full year estimate of one naira 15 kobo and so i think we expect a positive response from investors from this because it results yeah. to a dividend yield of nine percent which i think is quite attractive at this point in time so if you're expecting that dividend you're expecting the growth in earnings um, and improvement in risk at risky assets and um, quality of those assets uh, at 12 naira at this stage what is your target price for the company 
Our current target price is 20 naira 12 Kobo, which I think is reflective of our positive outlook for the company. We expect ROEs to come at 22% at the end of the year, which is significantly higher than our, our, for our average. Our coverage average for 2011 is at 11%. And so we think that the com company still offers significant value. It's currently trading at 1.4 times book based on our 2011 forecast. And we think that the premium on ROEs should be reflected in the price as well. And I think right now the market hasn't treated this stock fairly. And so we expect some re positive response driven by the strong results that we'll see for H1. Yeah. We've seen the banking sector reforms um, continue to play out with the nationalization of those three banks last week Friday. We are e nearing the end of the reforms which have taken place for two years now. What is your take on how, how to position yourself in the banking sector as we enter this new era um, in Nigeria? I think the development has been positive for the sector. One, it's reduced risk significantly. We feel asset quality has improved significantly, which really was driven by purchase of bad loans by Amcon. We feel that the recapitalization of these banks would create some drive for banks to start creating quality assets. We feel that, I think in the medium term, there will be some pressure on the sector as a whole because there's still limited quality assets in the sector. And so we feel pressure would be on margins because of the high competition for these quality assets. But I think nonetheless, the fact that there's been significant improvement in asset quality would also help banks to try to grow their risk assets. And I think we've already seen that in the H1 results for most of the banks. Banks like First Bank have come up with strong loan growth. And we've also seen some revision, upward revision in loan growth estimates as well, showing that banks have, can see scope for more asset creation. And so I think generally there's still, overall, there's positive trend in the sector. We've seen positive improvement in the sector outlook. Cost to income ratios for the sector is declining. Our coverage average has declined. We've seen some decline from 75% last year okay. to about 65% this year. So I think you, uh, overall the outlook for the banking sector is positive.